episode 401 of Ghost, the final season of this series, had everything that we needed. Mary was seeing visions. Tariq was blasting. There was revenge. We learned a little bit more about Noma. Are you ready to get into the details? Let's go. What's up, guys? It's Jill Monroe, and we are about to break down episode 401 of the final season of Power Book 2 Ghost. Episode 401 is I Don't Die Easy. And we know that is the case of Tariq. Tariq was in his bow, 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 bow mode. He and Brayden, we know where we left off last season. It was a lot happening. Brayden came to Tariq's rescue when it looked like it was about to go all bad for Tariq. Noma was waiting for him. Effie had turned against him. We know the Tejadas had. They came who's been jealous of Tariq the whole time, has been waiting to take Tariq out and it didn't happen. So we see Ghost, Ghost, slip of the tongue. We see Brayden and Tariq get away. We find out that they don't have a plan, right? They have no plan about what they're going to do. We also see Obi drop two of Noma's people because they mentioned the green card situation. And he quickly told Noma they let Tariq and Brayden get away. They let Brayden get in in the first place. Of course, he's covering his path because, you know, a favor for a favor, right? Noma is like, how is he able to get away? I need my Tariq problem solved. We know that meanwhile, Monet is in the hospital seeing visions of Bloody Mary in the mirror. Monet is fighting for her life. She's in surgery. And she's seeing visions of Poppy, Lorenzo, Mecca, and of course, her son, Zeke. All of them basically telling her how messed up she was, how she has screwed up everything for her kids, her greed, and that she deserves to die in a place in hell. And they want to sit right there and watch. I'm going to tell you, I know it is a power thing to have ghosts come back. I don't always love it, but, you know, whatever. It worked here. We saw Monet fight through it. She was like, hell nah, I ain't going out like that. Meanwhile, Drew and Diana are trying to figure out what they're going to do about their problem because they know that they asked Tariq to kill their mom and Monet survived. The family doesn't know. The family, i.e. Kane. So how are they going to fix their thing? Drew comes up with a plan to kidnap Becca, Brayden's sister, to get Brayden and Tariq so that they can cash out and kill Tariq. And that'll be half of their problems solved as far as Monet. Well, they get Becca. They snatch her up, telling her that Brayden's in trouble and to come with them. Becca's looking a little suspicious. They won't let her call Brayden. They won't let her call her family. They're rolling out. Diana gets a call from the hospital like, yeah, Monet's taking a turn for the worse. You might want to get over here. Drew is like, no, because remember, when they asked Noma in the beginning, hey, our mom's in the hospital. Noma was like, yeah, I know that you have that problem, but your priority is Tariq in this problem, which is a cold piece of work, considering that Noma threatened how many times to take out their whole family, but that's what she did. So we see that while they are snatching up Becca and rolling out, and Diana's contemplating what to do because she's worried about Monet in the hospital, getting an attack of the guilt, we know Tariq and Brayden have decided, well, Tariq's decided that the only thing that they can do is to go snatch up Anya. Tariq has had eyes on Anya with Pinky. You remember Pinky from a couple seasons ago. Pinky is connected with, they were connected with um, Stearns. Is that the guy's name that, you know, from the OG power that gave Ghost the money for truth and Tariq is at the university basically because of his generosity? all of those things. At any rate, that's where Pinky comes from. They've had eyes on Anya. Noma is getting Anya out of New York, having her go to the airport. So Tariq comes up with the plan that they're going to snatch Anya. They send a dummy car in to distract the guards that are out there. The guards are shooting at the car. Meanwhile, Tariq and Brayden sneak up behind and start taking them out. This is where the soldier boy, bow, 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 comes into play in this episode. 
Anya's in the SUV headphones on upset because the flight doesn't have a manicurist on board. I heard that. If your flight doesn't have manicurists, then you switch your planes. It's a Jay-Z line. Anyway, she's oblivious to all of this going on. But the people manage to get in the SUV and get away with her. Meanwhile, that's when Braden gets the call that they have Becca and they want to meet at, I think it's Pier 90, somewhere down the line. At any rate, Becca's suspicious. Diana hops out to get an Uber to the hospital to go check on Monet. Drew is acting all skittish because we know he's all geeked up, concerned. So they get to the place. Becca's suspicious. She ends up macing Drew and running. Brayden rolls up. They're hiding out. Drew is with a gun in the car looking for them. Tariq to the rescue because we thought initially Tariq was going to leave Brayden out there because they have this whole conversation of how they're frustrated and all of these things that are going on. Um, you know, it's a mess. Speaking of the other people that are out and about looking for Tariq, Kane and Diana. Now we know Kane got a little nicked from the gunfight. Remember Brayden was like, I think I got one of them. He got Kane but not bad enough to kill him, but, you know, serious where he needs a doctor. So Kane is like, bump that. I'm going to find Tariq. And my first stop is Brayden's family's house. So he beats the crap out of Brayden's brother. And the father comes in and he's like, we don't know where he is. You know, these people, we've called the police. And then Effie comes to the rescue because she doesn't initially want to go with Kane over there because she's like, it's dangerous. They don't know where he is. What are you doing? And Noma did read Effie down in front of Kane, and it was a little embarrassing. She was like, yeah, you were screwing Tariq, right? You definitely should know where he lays. But now, of course, she's with Kane. So anyway, Effie comes through and gets Kane to stop. And they're off to try and go find where Tariq might be. They're going to go look. So in the meantime, I forgot to mention that Tariq and Brayden called Davis for help. Interrupt Davis's shower time with two young ladies. You know that method, man. <laughs> we can talk about that another time, though. But anyway, anyway, because it's been a lot, right? So when Tariq calls Davis, Davis is basically like, I'm disbarred right now. I'm trying to find my license. I can't have this conversation with you, and I can't help you. But later on in the episode, Noma and Obi show up at Davis's place. Davis is ready with that heat, right? And Noma wants him to give up Brayden and Tariq's whereabouts. She's like the easiest retainer you ever had. Davis holds them down and then makes a call and lets them know, hey, it's 100K on each of your heads Noma has out there. You guys need to go undercover. So... Even though at first he skirt skirted them, he still had their back, right? And so, like I said, Brayden and Tariq rescue Becca. Tariq comes through and whams Drew's car. And, you know, they kind of have a shootout. Drew, Tariq tells Drew, listen, what are you going to do? Basically, when I tell Monet and everyone else that you guys wanted her dead. Man, so it's a lot happening. <laughs> they speed off. They take Becca home. And um, Brayden and Becca's dad unleashes all of his racist things that, that he has been holding back. He's like, those jungle bunnies, that life, you know, this is what you chose. You are no longer my son. Becca's like, that is your son. He's like, no more. You just want to be a monkey in that show. And so Brayden leaves and he's like to Tariq, I don't have anybody. You are my family. And Tariq was like, you know, imagine if we just would have been college students, regular kids and not in this life. Tariq apologizes for bringing Brayden into this situation. And Brayden's like, I chose it, which he did. Let's be clear. Brayden time and time again went after the excitement and the thrill he got from wanting to be in the drug game. So I don't fault Tariq for that, you know? Meanwhile, back to Drew and Effie. They're on campus because it's a 100K alert. We also see, I can't forget this. This is key. Paz's son, remember Paz from the OG Power, 
Angela's nephew. We know he's a federal investigator and that Cooper Sachs sent him a drive. He's been shut down for everybody, including Blanca, like a leave the St. Patrick's alone, leave all of this alone. There's nothing we can do. We are shut out. But of course, much like his aunt, he's like, no, I'm going to figure out what's going on and I'm going to get to that St. Patrick guy. I'm going to make him flip. So he's headed up to campus at the same time that Brayden and Tariq are headed to campus to get the dough where Tariq has had it hidden somewhere on campus. Little bit of money, you know, guns, money or whatever. He's headed up there. They run into Berkisha, you know, is that her name? What is light skin Keisha's character name? It's Bukenda. I'm blanking on her name, but you know who I'm talking about, right? When the nephew asks if they've seen Tariq, the little white girl was about to tell. And she was like, uh uh, do not tell the whereabouts of black men to the cops, young lady, right? And the girl is like, how did you know it's a cop? And he's like, what makes you think I'm a cop? She was like, it's all over you. And it is, right? And the little white girl's like, can you teach me? I guess those are the allies we're looking for, right? Anyway, he presses on. Meanwhile, we said that there is 100K each on Tariq and Brayden's head. So some other assassins, we'll call them, have gotten in the mix. One is a girl with some knives. The other is a long-haired sharpshooter. Well, after many things have happened, right, Effie sends a text to Tariq letting him know that they're on campus. They're looking for him after they already have the call. So it's getting thick on campus, right? Well, in a garage, Brayden, Tariq, Angela's nephew, and the long-haired sharpshooter all end up encountering each other. Now, Angela's nephew, he thinks he can talk Tariq down and tell him, you know, listen, this is probably your only shot. My, you know, my aunt knew your father. And when he told him who he was, Brayden's like, who is Angela? What is happening? And Tariq's like, oh, my dad's bitch. So yeah, that didn't go over too well. Suffice it to say, then sharpshooter comes along, distracts them. Angela's nephew ends up in a shootout with sharpshooter. He takes sharpshooter out, right? In the meantime, Angela's nephew is revealed about this drive. So Tariq gets the drop on nephew and calls Noma. And is like, let's call a truce, stand down. I got this federal agent. He's looking for you. He has this drive full of stuff. I'll take care of this if you stand down and we call a truce. Obi, who, by the way, earlier in the episode, thought he was going to replace Mecca and put the moves on Noma when she was vulnerable because he saw a little opening. She slapped him and was like, get your mind on business, on your big brain and not on your little one. I like a woman that is about business, but it's clear Noma has some gaps, some holes, some problems that we're going to see this season because her daughter doesn't really mess with her. She doesn't know what her mother does. Sound familiar? We had this in Ghost. And she's a little untrusting of her mother and rebellious. So we'll see where that goes. At any rate, back to the parking garage. So Angela's nephew, and I'm sorry, I keep forgetting his name. He got the drop on long-haired assassin. Tariq gets on the phone call. He grabs the assassin's phone. He calls Noma. Noma's like, what are you doing? Obi advises her, it's probably a good idea to stand down, take care of this problem. After much deliberation, Noma agrees. She takes the hat, um, the prices off of him and says the condition of this is Tariq can't move any product anywhere. So what's he gonna do for money? Angela's nephew was like, you don't want to do this. You don't want to kill me. And Tariq basically tells him, your aunt ruined my family's life and kills him, takes him out. Tariq is a stone cold killer. I mean, he's already taken out. His first kill was an undercover detective, dirty one, but how fitting that at this point in the game, he's taken out the feds. So listen, the next part of the plan is he takes Angela's nephew's gun and acts like he killed the shooter after the shooter killed Angela's nephew. And they go on reporting. But Kane gets the message, but he doesn't care. He's like, I'm going to take him out. Tariq sees Kane coming after him and calls Drew and was like, get your brother. 
So Drew basically runs to where they're going to meet up at and tells Kane to stand down. Diana said that she was mistaken, that it wasn't Tariq that actually shot Monet. So Kane is like, what is going on? It's suspicious. It's a bunch of drama. They head back to the hospital to see what's up with Monet. He has no choice but to stand down. Monet is like, who did this? They're like, we don't know. She's like, find out. Drew had told Diana that she should kill Monet before she woke up, but Diana couldn't do it. And Drew is like, now look where we are. So now they're kind of at the mercy of Tariq because it's drama out there. We don't know where Tasha is right now, but we know Tasha's the one that actually shot Monet. I will tell you this out the gate. I am so sad to see ghosts going because this is how you start a season. I talked to Method Man and Michael Rainey Jr. who portrays Tariq earlier this week, maybe last week before the episode premiered. So I'm gonna put a link to that right here if you wanna check it out. And throughout the season, I am going to try and tap in with other cast members to get some insight behind the final season of Power. Forgot to mention the final scene. After all of this has happened, Paz is notably upset because she told her son, stay away from the St. Patrick's. You are all I have left. I lost Angela. They took her from me. I can't lose you too. Of course she does. And she goes to this detective named Don, Detective Don, who we meet while he is giving confession. And he keeps mentioning his wife, Denise, and how his wife, Denise, wasn't lost. She was murdered. Obviously, wife, Denise, is going to somehow be connected to Tariq, ghost, power, or something. And Paz goes to him for help in figuring out what really happened to her son because she knows that Tariq St. Patrick is involved. And that, friends, is episode one of season four of the final season of Ghost Power Book One. Like I said, we're going to have interviews throughout the season. Tap in and let me know what your comments are. I would love to hear them. And I will see you next week for episode two.